And now, Updater Company presents Richard Diamond, Private Detective, written by Blake Edwards and transcribed by Fred Matzner, and generously supported by the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council and the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone. Tonight's episode, The Gibson Murder Case. Hello there, this is Diamond. Hey, I got a beef. I went shopping for my girl, Helen Asher, the other day. You know, stuff for dinner. This town's gotten hotter than a blast furnace in Death Valley, so you gotta pick out things that make for a cool meal. Like salads, cold cuts, beer, real picnic style. Well, I figured I could whip up a fancy toss salad or something, until I got around to the tomato counter. Have you glommed on to the price of tomatoes lately? Now what's with that? So the cost of living is inflated, so a T-bone makes like it just arrived direct from the Sultan's classiest cow. Okay, a T-bone, I can understand, but what's with a tomato? Oh, uh, I got another beef, too. Why can't people do their killings in December when it's cool? It started last Tuesday morning, about 11 o'clock, in an apartment in the neighborhood called Inwood. Ginny. Yeah, genius. No cracks. No cracks? We're both waiting for old Gibson to turn us into the cops, and you say no cracks? This whole rotten mess is your fault. Well, how did I know the old goat wouldn't fall for well, it? Well, he didn't, so we better stop packing. What for? Because I don't want to play hostess to a lot of little men in blue. I'm allergic to handcuffs. Relax, will you? He won't find us. He can trace me from the other apartment. How? Gibson don't know your real name. Did you leave anything at the other place that would lead him here? No. Cleaned out everything except the clothes. I didn't intend to move them. <laughs> I noticed you got away with the mink. What you want me to do? Leave it behind? Nah, nah. We can hock it. Hock it? Yeah, you want to blow town, it takes cash. Cash I ain't got. You're telling me. Look, baby, if Gibson does go to the police, I'll have to hock the coat so we can blow this joint, see? All right. You go get rid of it, and I'll start throwing some things in our suitcase. Who's that? How would I know? Maybe it's the landlady. Oh, I forgot. They're painting this floor today. Oh, yeah, I saw the painters in 206. They'll probably start in this room in a couple hours. Okay, okay. Dump that coat. I don't want the landlady to spot it. Yeah. Yeah, what? Gibson! So, you really are married, huh? Who is it, Horst? Hello, Virginia. Mr. Gibson! Yes. I waited around in front of the other apartment and followed you here. I wanted to be sure to send the police to the right place. Look, Mr. Gibson. You look, whatever your real name is. I don't like being blackmailed or threatened. But please. No, 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 Virginia, my mind's made up. In a way, I'm sorry for you. But you didn't think about me. I'm past 60, and I'm tired of being made a fool. Look, why don't you give her a break, Mr. Gibson? Now, I'm not asking yeah, that's for very it. noble of you. You should have thought about that a few hours ago. When you accused me of making love to your wife, you're not really married. Why, you, I ought to... Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no need for expressing your indignation. There'll be plenty of time for that when the police arrive. Hav. Yeah, come in here. Oh, how dare you? you? You take your hands off me. Look, you ain't calling nobody. You'll listen to me. Take your hands off me. What are you gonna do, Hav? Huh? I'm gonna change this old goat's mind about calling the cops. No, you can't threaten me. Oh, you struck me. <laughs> How'd you guess? Hav, oh, take it easy. He's an old man. Your, your concern is misplaced, my dear. I can take care of myself. Why, you... Uh, give me that cane. No. Uh, I'll be glad to give it to you. Across your shoulders. Give me that. Hav, oh, be careful. Hit me with a cane, will you? you don't... I'll shut you up for good. Oh. Hold me. Oh. Hold me. You idiot. Huh? You big, stupid idiot. Look what you've oh, done. Oh, come on, come on, Gibbsy. Come on, come on. Holy cow. Is he... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, shut up. We gotta get him out of here. What'd you have to hit him with that cane? Look, help me get him out of here. Oh, how are we gonna do it? It's broad daylight. Yeah, oh, we can't get him out of the building like this. We'll have to wait till tonight. We can't leave him in here. Why not? The painters. What do you mean? Would... They'll be here in a little while. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now what, genius? Oh, shut up. Shut up, will ya? I gotta think. <laughs> Hmm. 
Diamond Detective Agency murders financed while you wait. Oh, you idiot. Oh, is this Toodles Asher, the belle of Park Avenue? Ah, uh, this is Helen Asher, the girl that goes steady with the Diamond Detective Agency. Ah, sounds like a fine organization. Are they reliable? Very seldom. <laughs> I'll tell you better as soon as I find out what I'm going to do tonight. You're going to give your butler the evening off, and the Diamond Detective Agency is going to march through your front door, single file, and show you a shortcut to spin the bottle. Oh, what time does this this begin. How long will it take you to pucker? About two seconds. Well, I won't get there till late. Don't hold it or you'll end up looking like Betty Boop. You're terrible. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty. So is a baboon. Oh, no, what you said. You won't be late, will you, Rick? I don't know. After that last crack, I think I better start going steady with King Kong. Rick. No, I'm mad. Ricky, I love you. I think you're the most wonderful man in the world. Well... I think you're the most handsomest, strongest, smartest... Well, all right. Tell me something I don't already know. Rick. Bye, baby. See you at eight. Bye. Hey, I'm adorable. B, I'm so beautiful. C, I'm... Now look, honey, I can't make it till eight o'clock. I've got a fan dancer who's a client. She wants to go out and trap an ostrich this afternoon. Is this the Diamond Detective Agency? Uh, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is this Mr. Diamond? Uh, yeah, w what's the matter? Y you sound like you're standing on a body. Oh, Mr. Diamond, please, you've got to help me. I, I just don't know what to do. No, 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 take it easy. Who is, <gasps> who is this? <gasps> what? I thought it moved. What moved? The man sitting in my chair. Well, that happens now and then. Why shouldn't he? Oh, well, because he's dead. What? Yes, I came home this afternoon from girls' camp, and when I unlocked my door and went in, I, I saw this corpse sitting on my Hepplewhite. On your what? Hepplewhite. I, I don't know how he could have gotten there. He Hepplewhite? No, the dead man. What about Hepplewhite? Who? The guy th this corpse was sitting on. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a chair. Hepplewhite's an old antique chair. Oh. Oh, now I'm so confused. Well, 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 move over, honey. Now, 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 take it easy and give me one thing at a time. Who's the dead guy? <laughs> Homicide, Sergeant Otis. Hello, Otis. Let me talk to the lieutenant. Diamond? No, this is Black Beauty. I just did a mile in 112, and I want to report that I've been doped. Now put the lieutenant on the phone. Uh, lieutenant Levinson. Diamond, Walt. I don't want any. You take your killings to another precinct. Oh, now don't be a sorehead. Giving you business is just my way of showing you my friendship. Can't we just be buddies at a distance? I'm tired of chasing corpses. Well, grit your teeth and get over to 419 Park Terrace East, Department 108. Homicide? Yeah. A dame named Esther Blodgett reported it. She lives there. Who's dead? Well, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hepplewhite. Hepplewhite? Yeah, you ask Miss Blodgett about it. She'll uh, put you straight. You coming over? Yeah. Bye. <laughs> As I went out of my office, I thought about Esther Blodgett and wondered how mad she would be when the police turned up. I had to call them whether she wanted the scandal or not, because homicide comes first in my book. I'm an ex-cop, and I still follow the rules. It's not a conscience. I just like staying in business. So, when someone turns up with a killing, I always let Lieutenant Walt Levinson know about it. I grabbed a cab, and 20 minutes later, I was standing in Esther's apartment along with Walt, the dead man, and Hepplewhite. Oh, you're a swell fellow, you are. What's the matter, Walt? I've just been going through that Hepplewhite routine for the last ten minutes. I just found out it was a chair. That one right over there, the one the stiff's in. Aww. Mr. Diamond, why did you call the police? I thought you'd ask that. Because that man's been murdered, Miss Blodgett. That's what good citizens do when they find a dead man in the apartment. Oh, but... But, but the, the scandal! I'm a school teacher. What will my students' mommies and daddies think? Honey, just confuse him with the Hepplewhite routine. <laughs> What'd you find out, Walt? Not much. Corn will be here in a few minutes. Looks like someone gave him a pretty good beating. What's that all over his clothes? Um, isn't that blood, Mr. Diamond? Yeah, he's been bleeding all right. I mean that brown stuff, Walt. It looks like lint or something. I noticed that, too. I don't know what it is. We'll have the lab analyze it. Now tell me, Esther, you said when you came in, you unlocked the door. Yes, that's right. Are you sure it was locked? Why, yes. It has a catch lock. Besides, you have to turn the key and use the other hand to turn the knob and... Did you touch anything? Open any windows? I touched nothing. 
Hmm, well, there's a good one, Walt. Yeah, a corpse sitting in a room with the doors and all the windows locked. Do you always lock the windows when you go out, Miss Blodgett? Well, I've been away for several weeks at a girls' camp. Aren't you a little old for that sort of thing? Oh, I've been counseling one of the teachers who goes along to take care of the young girls. Hmm, what do you think, Rick? Well, he wasn't killed in this apartment. No, no signs of a struggle. There was only blood around the chair and on the body. He must have been carried in. Well, there'd be blood trails on the floor. Not if he was carried in something. You say you never saw this man, Esther? Never in my life. Hmm. Any identification in his wallet? Yeah, the name's Gibson. Leland Gibson. No money taken either, so that eliminates the robbery angle. Any address? Yeah, he's got an old driver's license. 12 Payson. Pretty classy district. Judging by his clothes, he was well-fixed, tailored, good store. As soon as the coroner arrives, I'm going to check this apartment building. Maybe somebody heard something or saw something. Hey, Walt, uh, let me check this Payson Avenue address This for is you. a police job. Why do you want to check it? Oh, because poor Miss Blodgett looks so unhappy. I am. Mr. Diamond, I am very unhappy. See, Walt? So she's unhappy. If you want to check the place on your own, go ahead. I'm sending some men over anyway. Mr. Diamond, I like you. Well, thank you, Esther. No. Oh. I... I want to hire you to catch the killer and free me from this awful policeman. Awful policeman? Do you know how I got this way, Miss Blodgett? Oh, I'm sure it wasn't easy. Good for you, Esther. I got this way because of this... this private detective. Just call me Blue Eye. Ever since he stopped working with me and left the force, I've gotten mixed up in more screwy cases than a drunk in a whiskey truck. There isn't one week that he doesn't turn up with one or two killings. My, he gets excited, doesn't he, Mr. Diamond? And in his spare time, he intimidates my sergeant. Just call me Rick, dear. I've taken enough bicarbonate in the last year to stop Vesuvius from erupting. And if he doesn't give me a little peace and quiet, I'm going to end up solving a killing of my own. Rick. My, that's a nice name. How did you ever get to be a school teacher? You don't look the type. Are you listening to me? What makes me so different? I've seen signs on highways that say it better than I can. What are you two babbling about? Y you mean the ones that say danger, stop, look, and listen. I was thinking about curves and soft shoulders. Oh, no. Now you listen to me, Diamond. This is serious business. A man's been killed in soft shoulders. I mean, Miss Blodgett's apartment. If you want to take her on as a client, go ahead. But any questions from here on in will have to be gotten down at police headquarters. You are taking me in, Captain? Yes, you'll have to come down for questioning. Rick! You go along with the big bad policeman, dear. I'll have you out in no time. Well, all right. If you say so, but... but... <laughs> This has never happened to me before. Oh, no, no. That's unfair. Wall. Stop blubbering. Wall. What? Oh, you get out of here. <laughs> Otis! Where the devil is Otis? I left Walt jumping up and down in front of Esther and the corpse and headed for Payson Avenue. It was an old brownstone in one of the wealthier districts. When I rang the doorbell, I got another surprise. Yes? Yes. Uh, don't tell me you're a school teacher. I beg your pardon? Oh, forget it. It's the landmarks that threw me. What do you want? Do you know a Mr. Leland Gibson? Yes, he's my father. Now, uh, just who are you? Name's Diamond. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, Miss Gibson. It's father? Something's happened to father. May I come in? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Yes. Now, please, what is it? What's happened to Dad? Well, uh, he's dead. Oh, no. No. Now, look, I, I know this is tough, but, but you've got to help me. The police will be here any minute. The police? Yes, your father was murdered. Oh, I knew something like this would happen. You did? Well, tell me about it. Uh, well, I, I, I don't mean I expected Dad to be... Okay, now, now, now just, just, just take your time. Cry it out. I'm, I'm sorry. Have you a handkerchief? Oh, sure. Here. Thank you. Now, uh, think you can talk about it? Dad left the house about three weeks ago and moved into a hotel. Did you have a fight or something? Oh, no, no. Everything was fine, but... Now, 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 no. hang on. Well, things couldn't have been better. And he was in wonderful spirits when he left. No arguments, no hard feelings. He didn't leave mad. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Then, um, do you have any idea why he suddenly packed up and moved into a hotel? Well, I'm, 
I'm not sure, but I think it was a woman. A woman? Yes. He, he told me one day he met someone he liked very much. The day after that, he moved into the hotel. I never saw her, and he never said any more about her. Weren't you a little worried? Oh, naturally. Father isn't a young man anymore. Oh, I mean, wasn't. Uh, just one more question. What hotel did he move to? It was the Adams on Broadway. He used to go there three nights a week for dinner and a game of bridge before he decided to move in. Well, uh, thank you. Are you all alone? Y yes. You got any friends you can call? A few, I guess. Well, call them. It's better not to be alone. And ball your head off. It'll do you some good. Oh, I'll, I'll send you your handkerchief, mister. Diamond. Richard Diamond. Uh, keep it. And now, this public service message from Up Thinner Company. There's a killer on the loose and it's in your city, Mr. Smith. And it's in your town, Ms. Johnson. It's on the street, it's in your supermarket, and yes, it's even in your playground. No, you can't see it, and that is what makes this killer so very dangerous. The worst part is that this killer is abetted by many of our own people. That's right. They may be your neighbors, your co-workers. They may even be members of your own family. Every man, woman, and child that does not wear a mask that covers their mouth and their nose is a partner to this fiendish virus. It's up to all of us to do our part. Wear your mask and wear it properly. Social distance, even when outdoors. Wash your hands, and whenever possible, urge others to do the same. Like it or not, we are all in this together. So wear your mask, and wear it proudly. Richard Diamond does. It's the patriotic thing to do. For some reason, I've got a talent for leaving people emotionally disturbed. Walt hops around like a rabbit in a cabbage patch, and Otis always tears his hair out by the hands full. Miss Gibson was less active about it. She just tried to smile and shed enough grief to fill a tub. I grabbed another cab and headed for the Adams Hotel. Yes, sir. Do you wish to register? No, but I want to find out about someone who did three weeks ago. Oh? Uh, yeah. Oh. A Mr. Leland Gibson. Why, yes, he's staying at the hotel. From now on, that's past tense. Huh? I don't understand. He hasn't notified us that he's leaving. Well, that might be a little difficult. If you'll run down to the morgue, I think you'll find you're stuck with an empty room. Uh, morgue? Yeah. Mr. Gibson has taken over one of the slabs, rent-free. Oh, my goodness. What happened? Oh, he's kind of dead. When did you last see him? Early this morning. He left the hotel around 10. Know where he was going? Why, no. Do you remember him having any visitors in the last three weeks? A girl, I mean? No. Are you looking for a girl? Uh, yeah. Mr. Gibson's daughter seems to think he was running around with a woman since he moved into the hotel. Oh. Oh, you say that like you knew what I was talking about. Oh, it was common gossip around the hotel. What was? Well, Mr. Gibson has been coming to the hotel for many years. He used to eat dinner here three nights a week and then play bridge with some of the hotel regulars. Now, about a month ago, we took on a new waitress. Uh-huh. Now, it was very obvious that Mr. Gibson was quite taken by her, so much so that he moved into the hotel and ate at her table every night. Oh. And, uh, what was her name? Virginia Pelgrim. Quite good-looking, about five feet brunette. Very, well, um... Hmm. I'd like to see her. Well, that's impossible. She left the hotel about a week after Mr. Gibson arrived. Oh, swell. Wasn't Mr. Gibson unhappy? Oh, no. He was rather happy, in fact. I believe he wanted her to move so that he could see her more often. Now, what makes you say that? Some of the things she said in the kitchen to the other girls. Hmm. Do you know where she might have moved? No, but um, you might check with the flower shop. Mr. Gibson used to send flowers every day. Well, I wasn't sure where I was going, but if Virginia Pilgrim was my best lead, then maybe she could tie the Gibson murder up with a silk ribbon. I talked to the flower clerk, and he gave me the address that the flowers had been sent to every day. It was a nice apartment in the village and the landlady stuck her nose out like she was trying to smell me instead of see who was calling. 
Yes. I hope that door doesn't slam shut sometime. You'll have a bloody nose for weeks. What do you want? Roll out an eye with that nose and I'll show you my badge. Aren't you cops ever polite to anyone? Well, there's a face that goes with it. I'm looking for a girl, about five foot three, dark brunette. You're in the wrong place. Her name's Pelgrim. Oh, her. She lives upstairs. Well, she does, huh? Is she in now? No. Went out this morning. Hasn't come back. And she probably won't. She have many visitors? Only a couple. Men. Well, that figures. Ever see an elderly man, gray hair, about 60? Sure. Every day. Know his name? No. You said she had a couple of visitors. Who else? Another man. Young guy. Kind of greasy. Only came around a few times. The old man was there this morning. Had an argument. Could you hear what they said? I don't snoop. <laughs> Anyone else? No. Who paid her rent? She did cash. Mind if I take a look at her apartment? Got a search warrant? No. Then you can't. Okay, thanks. You've been charming. I left the old bat and headed back to the school teacher's apartment. If I was right, I'd seen setups like this before. But there was still the problem of finding out how Gibson was killed and how he got into a locked room. When I pulled up, I saw the wagon, complete with corpse and coroner, pulling away for the morgue. And when I went in and knocked on the door, I was certain they had forgotten one of the bodies. Oh, it's you, Shamus. Why, Otis, they're leaving without you. Who is? The hearse. Shouldn't you be lying down or something? Now you stop that, Rick, and get in here. Hello, Walt. What's new? Well, Rick. Well, Esther. Has Otis been using his rubber hose on you? Oh, no, no. But <laughs> I was getting lonesome. I'm glad you're getting back so soon. You are. As soon as you two quit rolling your eyes at each other, maybe you can tell me what you found out, Mr. Diamond. <sighs> yeah, well, send Otis down to the station for a search warrant. Then tell him to get over to 300 West 12th Street and see what he can find in a Miss Virginia Pelgrim's apartment. Who's Virginia Pelgrim? The only person who was mixed up with a murdered man. There was another man who used to see her, but I can't find out who he was. All right. Otis, go get a warrant. Yeah, Lieutenant. Thanks, Diamond. A pleasure, Sergeant. What did you find out, Walt? There were 11 people in the building at the time of the killing. None of them ever saw the guy before. Here's a list of the names. Three people on this floor, five on the second, and three more on the third. Have you talked to the landlady? Certainly. She doesn't know any more about it than the rest. What about that funny brown lint on the dead man's clothes? We're checking on that right now. The lab said they'd call me. Did the landlady say she had a key to his apartment? Sure, sure, but she hasn't used it but once since Miss Blodgett was away at girls' camp. When did she use it? Three days ago when she had to let the painters in. And she says that the windows and door were definitely locked. Because after she let the painters out, she locked them herself. Well, did they paint the whole building? They finished the second floor today. Hmm. Oh, I'll get it. Miss Blodgett, probably the lab. Yeah? Rick! Yeah? Do you know who did it? I, see. I got a hunch. <gasps> oh, you're okay. wonderful. Yeah. Lab, Walt? Yep. That lint you spotted on the dead man's clothes is from the mat that they put on the rugs. Mm hmm. Walt, you were on all the floors. Did one of the apartments have a missing rug? They're all missing from the second floor. The tenants took them down to the basement when the painters moved in. Any off this floor or the third? Nope, just the second. Well, your killers are on the second floor, Walt. How do you figure? Well, let's look at what we got. A dead body in a locked room. Blood on body and floor around body, but nowhere else in the room. Carried in... In a rug. Bullseye. <gasps> oh, this is so exciting. Uh, Esther? <gasps> Sorry. Yeah, but how does a dame called Pelgrim figure into it? There's no Pelgrim listed in this building. Well, there shouldn't be, if I'm right. The dead man met Virginia Pelgrim when she was working as a waitress in his hotel. She gave him a pitch and he fell. He put her up in an apartment so he could see her more often. So what? I think she was working with another man. A man who was seen around her apartment by the landlady. Then how did the body get over here? The guy the dame was working with probably lives here. What about the motive? Well, my guess is that Gibson was being blackmailed. And he followed the girl here. He was probably going to yell cop, so they killed him. Okay, now what about the locked room? Explain that. I'll let the landlady of this building explain it, Walt. Go ask her one question. Who had this apartment before Miss Blodgett? Uh, Esther. Oh, I'm sorry. Esther. Oh, I can tell you that. A Mr. and Mrs. Austin. They moved to a smaller apartment and let me have this one. It's more rent than they couldn't afford it, I expect. This is a better apartment, though. It has beautiful wainscoting. Esther? And the mo hmm? What apartment did they take? Oh, it's on the next floor, apartment 209. Well, according to this list of people who were on the second floor at the time of the killing, the Austins are the only couple. What did Mrs. Austin look like, Walt? Oh, about five foot three, dark brunette, 
Very, very well done. Say no more. Come on, Walt. Yeah? I want to talk to you again, Mr. Austin. Why? I told you everything I know. Where's your wife? In the back. We're coming in. Okay, you don't have to shove. Who oh, is it, Huff? Uh, them cops again. Hello, Virginia. Do I know you? Where's your rug, Mr. Austin? Down in the basement. Miss Pilgrim, how long have you been married to this man? About three. Hey, how'd you know? Shut up. Know your name? You might as well tell the lieutenant everything. Why did you lie about knowing Mr. Gibson? I didn't. I, I never saw him before in my life. I didn't tell you the dead man's name was Gibson. How'd you know that? Don't answer that. Oh, shut up. You and your husband killed Mr. Gibson and carted him downstairs in a rug. Pfft, why would we do that? Because the painters were on the way to paint your apartment and you had to get him out without being seen. You dumped him in Miss Blodgett's apartment because you knew she was out of town and you used to live there so you still had a key. How? Just shut up. We got enough to hold both of you on. The rug will have bloodstains on it. <gasps> get out of my way. Get out. Get out of my way. <laughs> No. Why, Walt, you're so rough. I... I didn't kill him. Harvey did. I didn't kill him. Okay, okay, you can tell me all about it down at the station. Hey, where are you going? It's 7.30. I got a date. What about Miss Blodgett? She's gonna get lonesome again. Ah, uh, she was born that way. I've gotta see a girl who's gonna hold a pretty interesting class of her own. Bye. <laughs> You look comfortable. Where's Francis? I gave him the night off, like you suggested. Mm -hmm. You're cute. I've got a cool dinner in the library. School days, school days. Oh, you sound happy. I was just thinking about a school teacher I knew once. Hmm, mm -mm, that dinner looks toothy. Sing for your supper. What? I got a new tune on the piano. Oh, honey, I'm hungry. Mm, you sing first and then you can eat. Oh, all right. What is it? Right here. So in love. Mm, okay. Strange dear, but true dear, when I to you was some girl asking for you. Oh, some girl. Well... I told her there was no one here but the guitar tuner. Oh? <laughs> she leave her name? Uh-huh. Hepplewhite. Hepplewhite? Yes. Hmm. Who's she? Ah. Uh, come here, baby. No. I want to know who's Hepplewhite. Oh, just a chair, baby. A cute blonde chair. <laughs> You've just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, The Gibson Murder Case. Tonight's episode was directed by Doug Bost, with musical direction by Keith Burton. Richard Diamond was played by Rick Walter. Helen was played by Laura Foyce. Lieutenant Levinson by Jeff Ward. And Sergeant Otis by Ken Dillon. Also in our cast tonight, Joe Burby as Harvey Austin, Elizabeth Bell as Virginia Austin, and Miss Gibson. Doug Bost as Leland Gibson, Nikari Rodriguez as Esther Blodgett, Jeff Ward as the hotel clerk, Laura Foyce as the landlady, and I'm your announcer, Martin Collins. Richard Diamond was produced by Up Theater Company, with sound design by David Margolin Lawson. The public service message was written by James Bosley and performed by Peter Fleehan. 
Up Theater Company's programming is supported by the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council and the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, the Miranda Family Fund, the Manhattan Borough President Community Award, and listeners like you. Thank you. Join us again when we bring you another adventure of Richard Diamond, Private Detective.